Hi, my name is Lena and I'm a music producer, musician and an educator. I also run a YouTube channel called LNA Does Odious Stuff. So thank you Splice for asking me here again to do another video. And this video is about explaining compression in a very easy way peasy way. What I'm teaching in this tutorial are all the functions and concepts of compression, which are going to help you to fully understand how to apply it and when to apply it and why are you applying it. So let's get into this tutorial. What is compression? So compression's purpose is to reduce the dynamic range of a signal. So the dynamic range is measured as the range between the loudest point of the signal and the quietest point of the signal. What compression does is that it reduces, it reduces, it reduces the distance between the quietest and the loudest point of the signal. So we are doing this kind of squashing movement. To just physically show what does compressed signal look like, I have two masters here of the same track. If you go into SoundCloud or something, you will see tracks that are very compressed and tracks that are not that compressed. What is it used for? Compression is used for creating presence. You can imagine if we are making these quieter bits louder, so we can hear every single sound, every single breath, every single noise consistently together with the loudest bits. So example, when we are mixing, we want the vocals to be like very center and in the middle, especially in a pop music, in the top of everything. And compression does that effect to us. So let's listen to the signal that is not being compressed. So let's listen to the signal that has been compressed. Like that. So it might be presence or consistency. There might be a guitar solo, vocal, some kind of uh, track that is very not consistent in its dynamic. So some parts might be very quiet, some parts might be very, very, very loud. Compression can bring certain consistency between those different dynamics. So the difficulty of teaching about compression is the fact that there is no right or wrong. The usage of it completely depends of the signal and your personal taste and the purpose of your why you're using it. In this tutorial, I'm just talking you through all the technicalities of a compression. But if you want to know how to apply all the techniques that you're learning today, I have a tutorial which explains and gives you guidelines on how you can start learning how to apply all these techniques into your signals. The most important things that we need to look at here are threshold, ratio, attack, release, knee, and makeup gain. So let's get started with threshold. Threshold sets the point in which the compression will start. So everything above threshold will be compressed. This dial looks a lot like this dial here. If we listen to the vocal take, we need to have a look at now the volume that is represented here in the actual fader of the track. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. So what we can see is that the lowest point of the dynamics is in around minus 24 dp and the highest point is about minus 6 dp. So if I go to the threshold control and I move it down, you can see that it goes in minus dps. So if I said that the quietest part of that vocal was around between minus, minus 18 and minus 21, I could try first to example put this in minus 24, just under it, so minus 24. So this should capture most of the dynamics between the loudest and the quietest parts of this vocal. So now we need to apply some compre compression on the top of the threshold. Okay, so ratio. How much compression is being applied after the threshold? So we, our threshold is now minus 24. So if we look at the fader here, minus 24 here. So everything above here is being compressed. The ratio is written like this. So there's one, zero, zero, two, one. And what that means. So let's have a look here. So I just changed into the other view. So other graphics. And this one shows the input level on the left and output level on the 
bottom here. So this will make more sense in a minute, just a moment. <laughs> so now you can see that the line in the middle here is straight. So that means that the input and output are equal. They are same amounts. Also the fader on the left here is the input volume. The fader on the right here is the output level. So just to kind of visualize that bit bigger. Okay, so if I now lift this ratio, you can see that it kind of bends from here. And what that is, that is the threshold. So that sets, where does the compression start? So that means that the output is actually less than the input because it's kind of bent like that. So it's doing gain reduction. So we are reducing the dynamic between the high loudest and the quietest. And that means that we are reducing the gain. Flatten, like that. <laughs> Let's look, what does that mean then? 5, 25 to 1. What does that mean? So if we have example here, ratio 3 to 1. So for every single 3 decibels that goes over the threshold, every 3 decibels that goes over the threshold, so over the 24, in the output we will only get 1 decibel. So example, if we have 4 to 1, it will be for every four decibels that goes over the threshold in the output, we will only get back one. We are reducing that gain and we always just get back just one decibel. That can seem confusing, but don't worry if that confuses you. So let me demonstrate this with a very simple signal. If we go first one to one, which is the equal input and output, let's just start slowly increasing the ratio and have a look at the input and the output and just see what happens when I increase the ratio. So now they're about the same between minus 6 and 12 and then let's start adding ratio. And look what happens on the right. Left one stays the same when the right fader is going lower and lower and lower. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is the attack and the release. So which are here, attack and release. So I would like to demonstrate this actually by punching. <laughs> Stay with me. Attack and release are how fast is the compression starting to work and how fast does it release the compression uh, after the compression has been active. Okay, so think about com this is this is the compression. So let's see that the compression has a short attack and very long release. The movement would be like this. Short attack, slow release. Short attack, slow release. So the same thing if we have a slow attack and fast release. Slow attack, fast release. So the next thing we have is the knee here. So the knee is how fast the compressor reacts, what co uh, closer it gets to the threshold. Hard knee is called when you have it as like zero or one here. And you can see that it's almost that kind of corner here. And then soft knee goes like that. So if you would like your uh, your compression start much harder and faster, then you would have a hard knee. When if you would like it to have a softer start and landing, <laughs> then you would put a soft knee. And then we have here the makeup game button. When we are using compression and when we are compressing, we are of course reducing the gain of the signal. That means that the, uh, the signal that is coming out will be less than the input. 
so that we can actually gain stage while we are mixing or producing or whatever, we would like to make sure that the input volume here and the output volume here are going to be about the same. So what you need to do is just click that so that auto gain, makeup gain is not on. Personally, I find that Ableton Live auto makeup gain bit not good because it just makes everything super loud. So I just turned that off and now I'm going to make sure that the input and the output are about the same. So there's a couple of ways to do it. So you can see just even just looking at it, this is much higher than that. So I could just take it like this. So now it's about the same level. So I can just visually match it, but also I can just listen and match it. I can turn the compression off, listen to it. Turn the compression on and it's about the same volume. Good practice of doing after every time you use compression. Okay, so let's have a look at three creative ways of using compression. First one is side chaining. I have a compression on this synth track. And then I have another track next to it that will have only a kick going on. It depends what kind of stuff you want to make, but I'm going to have just the kick going. I want to go here back to the synth track and open this up from the triangle here, the compression. Audio from a section from input, I go and select the Cannibals kit. There we go. And from here, I need to go and select the kick. Kick. 707 post mixer. So I'm going to select the post mixer so that I can control that how the compression is reacting to the kick using this fader as well. First, we need to just see the threshold. Oh, something's already happening because I have the threshold on. We are mainly between minus 6 and minus 18. So if I go minus 20, that should do it quite nicely. So I'm going to apply some ratio. So in this one, I need to think how much gain reduction do I want to apply to the synth signal so that I can create the ducking effect. So that the pulsing effect is called ducking. So what that does is that the signal is being squashed every time that the kick is playing. I want it to be quite harsh, so I'm going to go around between maybe 5 and 10, somewhere there. Attack and release, they are probably the, har uh, the most important thing, because this is a very good place to actually see what they actually do. Fast attack, you can hear that the uh, gain reduction, as soon as the kick hits, the gain reduction will hit very fast then. <laughs> You can hear almost that kind of click sound. So I don't want the click sound, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of attack. And then how fast do we want it to release? Go a little bit harder knee on there. The next thing is parallel compression. Let's think that we have two rooms. So we have a run room with the vocals on it. And the vocals are very nice and lovely, very dynamic. And we want to kind of keep the dynamics on it, but we just want to make the vocals a little bit like stronger and deeper. So what I can do is put another room next to that room and open a door between them. So we have two rooms with the same signal on them. We're going to put a very, very harsh compression on that room. So then we have two signals going similar similar time. And we can now measure how much do we have, want to have the original dynamic nice signal. And then how much do we want to add some uh, very compressed signal, which is the same signal together to it. This is our room number one. Oh, it's have a little fun. And this return track here is our num uh, room number two. Open the door, which is the send here, send number A. Now send it from room number one to room number two. Now I'm trying to do is have a little fun. So now we have the signal here and we have the signal here. So we're not going to compress this first track at all. We're only going to compress the second room here. So we're going to apply quite harsh compression to it. So let's listen and compress. I'm trying to do is have a little fun. Nothing serious. I ain't trying to settle down. Anything I do, don't hold me responsible. 
Nothing serious. I ain't trying to settle down. Let's listen firstly, just the dry signal, and then we're gonna bring in the compressed signal. I'm trying to do is have Let's a little in. fun. Nothing serious. I ain't trying to settle down. Anything I do, don't hold me responsible. So already that brought so much more warmth and strength, especially strength into these vocals. If you don't want to do that, the two rooms technique, you also have dry and we have a wet signal, which means this is a this is parallel compression. <laughs> if you want to have more control over the parallel compression, then you would just do it here on the return tracks. Okay, so we have now here a track that is quite dynamic in the beginning here and then there's more it's more louder and stuff on the end so we would like to kind of create a little bit more consistency there and i have a creative tick for that tick <laughs> tip for that and that is adding two different compressions doing the different things so, so let's go to many minus 12. So not much threshold, just kind of like on the top there. And then but a lot more ratio for that. Short attack and release. And the second compression's job is to create consistent, compress more the whole single overall. So create consistency in overall the whole, to the whole thing. We need to listen, especially listen to the louder parts here. Because otherwise, if we just compressed listening to this we might crush what's here a lot so off. there we go and that is more there's definitely more consistency in this audio track here comparing to that that's my three tips creative application tips. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Please subscribe to my channel, LNA Does Audio Stuff. And also thank you so much, Splice, for having me here again for another video. So have a very lovely time of compressing all your signals and I hope to see you all soon. Bye.